So on Monday, we talked about um, react reactions. And we showed that if you have a react reaction, so the example we did in class was if I have zinc metal and aqueous copper 2 plus in solution, uh, this will spontaneously go to zinc 2 plus, that's a 2, and copper metal. And so this is spontaneous, so delta G less than 0. So if you have, um, and then the example we did in class was that if we then separate out the two half reactions, so our half reaction was zinc going to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons, and then we also had copper 2 plus. So these are our two half reactions, um, oxidation, reduction. We can separate them out into two different beakers connected by a salt bridge. And then because this reaction is spontaneous, we can then generate electrical work with it that causes a voltage, and we can have a current going. Um, so this, <coughs> excuse me, oh, I would re-record, but I don't care. Um, this is kind of cumbersome to write all the time, and this doesn't necessarily tell us everything to know about our cell. So there is so-called cell notation for how to describe that voltaic cell that we just uh, drew in class, where we had our zinc electrode, our copper electrode in the beakers of the respective zinc sulfate and copper sulfate solutions. Um, so rather than trying to draw out a whole cell every time, what we can do is, or this is for voltaic cells, we can take our anodic reaction, and we'll write it on the left side here, Uh, this vertical line refers to a phase change. It's going from, going from solid to solution phase. So on, on this left side here is our anodic reaction, anode. Then we write, uh, we had the salt bridge. Salt bridge is very important. If you don't have the salt bridge, it won't go. And then on the right side, then we have our cathode. which will be the reduction. And again, there's this vertical line here because the copper 2 plus is in solution, and then the copper uh, solid, the copper 0, is our electrode in the solid. OK, so that's how you express a voltaic cell. So some kind of additional notes. Here in this particular cell, we're using our metals as our electrodes. So we were hooking up like a zinc bar and a copper bar by a wire, and then we had the voltmeter in between. Sometimes for some electrochemical cells, we um, for maybe what we're, our redox couple is not a metal, so it's not conducive to hooking up as an electrode. So we sometimes use inert electrodes. And by inert electrodes, I mean the electrodes are what you hook up to the wire that conduct electricity. So that's what, that's what makes them electrodes. But they're not actually participating in a redox reaction. Their only purpose is to transfer electrons to and from the reagents that you're oxidizing or reducing. So often, some materials will be, let's say, carbon. Carbon could be conductive, so glassy carbon, for example. Uh, often, we could also use platinum or gold. So platinum and gold metal are both relatively inert, so they often do not participate in the reactions that we want to do. So that way, they're, they're really good electrode materials because they won't do side reactions with what you're doing. So as an example, suppose we have, let's say, a cell where I have a beaker of potassium iodide. Oops, that's I minus. And then over here, we have a beaker of permanganate and protons, and also potassium if you want. So uh, our redox couples are going to be 2I minus goes to I2. That's the oxidation. And then over here, it's permanganate going to manganese 2 plus. And I haven't really bounced this out. Uh, so you can bounce that on your own. We've done it before. Um, so the point is that. Permanganate and manganese 2 are both in solution. They're both aqueous ions. And then iodine is a solid, but it's not a very nice like 
metal bar. So as a result, you can't really use either of these as their own electrodes. So here is when we use the inert electrode that just took in dead electricity to, to cover these two. So what I could do is then I'll have maybe my carbon electrode. So some sort of, I don't know, some rod or whatever. And then we can connect it to a wire at the end, and then we'll have our voltmeter in between. And so that's how you make an electrochemical cell for reagents that aren't necessarily metals. And then so when we want to express this particular cell in terms of our cell notation, we do include the inert electrode, even though it's not participating. So what we do is here we have our carbon, which is a solid. That's our electrode. And so our nodic reaction is uh, I minus going to I2. So we have I minus aqueous. And again, phase change between carbon and the aqueous solution. And then we draw the oxidized product, which is I2, which is a phase change from the aqueous ion because I2 is now a solid also. And then what I forgot to draw here was we need a salt bridge. Otherwise, this won't work. So we have a salt bridge. And I don't know what we want to put in salt bridge. Maybe potassium chloride. Um, and then so in the salt bridge, here's our salt bridge, which I drew in red, pink. And then on the far right side, we have our cathodic reaction, the reduction, which is going to be permanganate aqueous. And then the reduced species is manganese 2 plus, which is also aqueous. So there's no phase change. These are both aqueous species. So I'll just put a comma here, no vertical line. And then we finish it off with our electrode. So phase change to the solid carbon electrode. So that's how we uh, denote different types of electrochemical cells that we are using.